The first of the developer live streams has been and gone, with a lot of new information coming to light regarding the all new 1.0 build for PC and console. From character creation, system updates, trader changes and more, if you want to stay updated with all things 7 days to die, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Kicking off the live streams, the devs did briefly touch on leaving early access, sharing that they felt they had been in early access long enough and that they were still aiming to release the experimental build for 1.0 in June for PC and then releasing for console in July, barring any issues regarding certification and show stopping bugs, so fingers crossed they managed to hit the deadline with no last minute delays. Character customization was shown off in more depth showcasing a lot more of the possible varieties in the system as well as many of the options available for creating characters in the upcoming build. From what I can gather there will be four race groups, white, black, Asian and native question mark comprising of 16 males and 16 female character models. Character creation options include race, gender, face variant, eyes, hair, hair colour and facial hair with lockable attributes so you can further control the included randomised toggle too. Richard wasn't sure, but he also suggested there would be anywhere between 20 and 32 different eye variants that will also utilise a new blinking animation as well as a gaze system, influencing the direction of focus for eyes such as looking in the direction of nearby players and objects. The devs also briefly described a new hair smashing system that would work to blend hairstyles more seamlessly with headgear and helmets, allowing for some styles to show beneath and below these wearable items. Moving on, we got a more in-depth look at the new armour clothing system with a reported pool of 16 different full armour sets being added. These will include one primitive set, five light sets, six medium and four heavy armours added to 1.0. Each piece of armour has a bonus perk affected by the quality of the armour piece and when combined provides a matching set bonus. Each set has its own sort of theme so the assassin set is focused on stealth, there's a farmer's armour set for farming, one for mining and a nerd set for combat and looting and so on. They did say these armour sets can also be mixed and matched too though, so it's not absolutely vital to build the complete set, though there is the added benefit of the matching set bonus if you choose to do so. Animations for third person view in vehicles have also been improved, things like capes have more advanced cloth physics and will flow in the wind, and jiggle physics will affect things like canteens and attachments to armour. We got to see some of the new animal models in action as well. The deer and doe models were sporting the new fur shaders, making them look much more naturalistic, and the new animations for idling and running were much more realistic as well. These changes could also be seen in the newly released 1.0 trailer for the Mountain Lion 2, and will undoubtedly be applied to all of the animal models across the board. They did also brush over some of the efforts that have gone into optimization stating this would be covered in more depth in a later live stream, but touched on improved art optimizations, draw calls and a new weighting system for RWG. So heavier buildings like skyscrapers generate smaller POIs around them to reduce FPS drops in more densely populated areas. Apparently cities are also more smoothed out, particularly due to the new weighting system with a lot of optimization having been done to get 1.0 to run on console. Zombie variant colour changes were also showcased with the colouring on the clothing and hair varying between the spawned entities. We could see some of the decal designs of clothing items changing between some of the models like the tourist and Steve zombie types, as well as the dress and hair colours for the party girl zombie too. Interestingly in the spawn menu there was also the added entity listed as inmate which seems to utilise the albedo variant system to create a permanent variant of the janitor zombie, likely due to the amount of prisons now available to explore in the game. The demolisher zombie was also shown off, new model and all, including new explosion effects with improved particles and VFX. New muzzle flashes, explosions and gore are also being implemented too, thanks to the fun pimps onboarding a new visual effects artist, who has had previous experience in the movie industry, bringing a little more star power to the VFX we can expect to see in the game following the release of the 1.0 build. The old journal system is being removed completely 
and replaced with an all new challenge system which takes on a new tier format, providing rewards for completion of each tier. For every row, you get a reward. We want you to actually redeem because we've put a lot of information into here that tells you exactly how all these things, that's, this is a replacement for the journal system, uh, but it also kind of rewards you as you're using it, so. Yes. It's uh, yeah, the basic tutorial at the beginning and the journal have been replaced with one new challenge system that yeah, you get XP every time right. you turn in one yes. of these. And then now I'm gonna redeem this. And then look, everything's available now. We're, we're teaching you a lot more about how to start the game. New player chests are also being added, costing just 10 wood for the base level version to craft, and that can be upgraded through material tiers like iron and steel, expanding the storage capacity of the containers with each upgrade. Items are persistent when upgrading, so items don't need to be emptied out in fear of losing them when upgrading the containers either, streamlining inventory management and saving us time managing our storage facilities. Crop models are also being updated, swapping in new higher detail 3D sprites in place of the older 2D crop models. We were only really shown the new cotton plant and goldenrod models in the livestream itself, as well as a screenshot shared to Twitter, but this change is likely going to apply to all of the crop models available in version 1.0 as well. Following what was shown, the devs also opened up to a Q&A session, accepting questions from the audience which shed some light on some interesting upcoming changes and additions to the latest update. Rather than covering the entirety of the Q&A, which consists of a lot of that's not happening type responses, I've condensed the answers to the topics I think are most relevant and to things that are actually coming to the game. First up, vehicles capacities were covered, describing the 4x4 as seating four people by default, with an added seating mod carrying up to six players at a time. The motorcycle will also support two players with an expanded seating mod, and the gyrocopter will support two players total. Trader progression will be slowed down and the economy has been improved with a stronger focus put on crafting progression going forward. This was a major issue for a lot of players, bypassing crafting completely and going straight for trader rewards. So hopefully this change will rectify that issue. Due to the new armor system coming to 1.0, the needle and thread magazine has been removed completely as I guess now it would just be completely obsolete anyway. The Duke collector now only requires primitive materials to craft, making it much more accessible early game. It produces murky water and has three mod slots. Installing the purifier mod will create blue water, the tarp mod will affect the speed of the water collection, and an expanded storage mod increases the water slots of the dew collector. Having all the mods installed will also produce purified water. Thousands of new lines of dialogue in 1.0 will cover some of the story points being developed with Trader Dialogue. These lines of dialogue will cover a range of lore related topics like the Duke, Noah and the Apocalypse as a whole. The Burnt Forest is making a return for both Navisgain and Random World Generation, with new sky effects being added for both the Wasteland and Burnt Forest, creating distinct visual identities for both regions and creating a more individual aesthetic for them both to distinguish them. There'll also be the addition of at least 75 new POIs with a waiting system working to optimise high population volume spawning. As discussed previously, this system will help to optimise more densely populated areas, generating smaller POIs in the general area of a larger POI, countering any significant FPS drops. In the same vein, there'll also be some updates to Random World Generation 2, increasing generation speed, allowing for bigger city sizes and increasing volume of wilderness POIs. Someone also asked if there will be DLC outfits available in the future which will feed into the new wardrobe system, a feature listed in the roadmap for things like purchasable skins, in-game outfit unlocks and Twitch drops as well. We haven't really seen anything more to do with stuff like the Horde armor set, so it might be a possibility that some of these outfits have been withheld for DLC because they didn't make sense for themed matching set bonuses for example. Interestingly, they also touched on the idea that they'd like to eventually add in some more boss type enemies, likely similar to the Grace enemy type already present in the game, though this isn't something that's actively in development right Right now, though this is definitely an interesting idea for the future. That's about it for this developer livestream, with more on the way very soon. 
Be sure to let me know what you think of all the upcoming changes in the comments below. Leave a like and make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with all things 7 Days to Die so you don't miss out on what comes next. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out one of my other videos on screen now.